Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to revisit the topic of operational amplifiers I did a video quite a while back now uh, about op amps I'll put a link to that video up there and I'm also acutely aware that it's a topic that uh, I've got a great deal to learn about um, and one of the great things about these videos for me is it forces me to actually uh, try and, and actually improve my knowledge and then hopefully I can pass some of that on to you. So if you're already an op amp expert this probably ain't the video for you because I'm certainly not an op amp expert but let's revisit the topic now and start by looking at a couple of applications that we can use op amps for. Uh, first of all starting with a little bit of revision on the op amp that we're going to use today. The op amp we're going to use today then is the TL072 and it's a low noise FET input op amp. Um, according to the data sheet the internal circuit looks something like that. You can see the two uh, FET stage inputs on the upper left hand side of the circuit diagram there. And if you uh, get the version that's the TL071 that's got a couple of other connections which the um, TL072 doesn't have. It comes in a, an 8 pin DIL package, well at least the version that I'm using does, and the two op amps are arranged uh, like this, uh, with um, the positive rail and the negative rail being um, on pins 4 and 8, as they, as they quite often are with um, dual inline integrated circuits. That's the amp. That's the op amp. So let's now look at the first circuit we're going to we're going to use, and let's um, let's look at it as an amplifier. After all, um, that's what it does. And the first version we're going to look at is what's called the non-inverting version. So here's the um, general arrangement of the circuit. So we've got the input on the left there going to the um, the positive input of the op amp, and then we've got. Uh, the output of the op amp obviously going to the output but also connected via resistor 2 to the negative input and that resistor effectively um, applies uh, negative feedback into the amplifier in other words it controls the gain and that's uh, quite an important thing to do if you're going to use the op amp as an amplifier because it has a great deal of gain and we need to um, rein that in to a certain extent so that we can get some control. Now to calculate the gain it's quite simply 1 plus uh, R2 over R1 um, but before we get into calculating the gain let's look at this circuit here which is similar but doesn't have resistors. Now this is a circuit I don't propose to actually show you operating today but this is another version of the same circuit and this circuit because all the output is being fed back to the negative input we'll have what we call unity gain i.e. it'll have no gain um, so what's the point of an amplifier that has no gain well quite a lot really because first of all it's a buffer now you might recall from first video that the input of op amps is very high impedance and particularly this one as it's got FETs at the input and the output is a much lower impedance so that's a nice way of impedance matching a circuit but it's also quite a good way of protect, protecting um, the, the stages further on from influence of stages beforehand. So that unity gain buffer amp is a version of the non-inverting amp um, and is also quite valid and you may come across that. Okay so I'm going to use values of 100k for R2 and 10k for R1 so if we do the maths there that gives us a gain of 11. Um, remember it's uh, 10, uh, 100,000 over 10,000 uh, plus 1, so that's 11. Uh, looking on the breadboard, uh, we've got uh, the arrangement as uh, you can see there. Now I've just drawn one of the op amps for now. You can ignore the um, resistor that's running ver vertically, that's part of the second circuit we're going to look at later. So you can see a 100k resistor there just below the op amp and a 10k resistor slightly off to the right towards the bottom. Inputs going to be on the left hand side and the output is going to be on the right hand side where you can see a blue uh, jumper cable. And I think finally there is another thing to point out there. There's a push button switch and there's a second 100k resistor just below the first one. And that allows me if I press the switch to put a second 100k resistor in parallel with the first one. And uh, without wishing to teach anybody to suck eggs at two 100k resistors in parallel will give us uh, an actual resistance of 50k. 
So that's going to allow me to halve the resistance in that uh, negative feedback path and we can look at the effect of changing the resistance on the gain of the amplifier and reducing the value of that resistor should um, reduce the gain of the amplifier. So let's have a look on the breadboard. OK, here's the breadboard arrangement then for the non-inverting amp. There's the uh, uh, dual inline package resistor network here and the push button switch. I've got the input um, coming in on this yellow jumper uh, from the uh, signal generator and I've got the outputs going to the um, scope second channel of this blue uh, jumper here and I'm also monitoring the signal generator outputs um, with off this yellow uh, input wire using channel 1 of the scope. So I'm going to reposition the camera so we can look at the, the scope. OK, here's the scope view then for the non-inverting amp. And I've got both channel 1 yellow and channel 2 purple both set to uh, 2 volts per division. So you can hopefully going to be able to see the effect of gain. So this is the yellow trace is the signal on the input side of the amp. Currently the scope saying it's about 1.28 volts peak to peak. So let's now attach um, the second purple channel to the output like so and you can see there we've got substantial amount of gain and I think the important thing to say is if I just uh, turn up the volts divis per division sorry turn down the volts per division you can see that those two signals there are actually most definitely uh, in phase so let's go back to two volts per division Okay, that's the gain of the circuit, and so that there is saying peak to peak voltage of about um, about eleven and a half, something like that. And remember, we said the gain was about eleven, so it's something somewhere near according to the maths. And that's with a hundred k resistor in the feedback circuit. So now what I'm going to do is press that push button switch in a moment, put the second hundred k resistor in parallel with the original one, which will give us a total resistance of of fifty k. So I'm going to do that now and hopefully straight away you can see the dramatic effect there as the gain has been reduced quite considerably it's now down to about 6.4 volts according to the scope so if I loose the push button switch that's the with 100k resistor in the feedback and if I press again to add that add resistor and we're now down to effective resistance of 50k in the feedback circuit and you can see quite dramatic effect in the gain makes no difference to the phase but does make quite a difference to the gain. So that is the non-inverting amplifier and the effect of the feedback resistor. OK, second application for the op-amp then um, is the inverting amplifier. And the circuit is similar. We've still got that uh, resistor in a feedback path, but this time the input is going into the negative uh, input of the op-amp and the feedback is coming back in the same way and we've got the positive side connected to ground through R3 with a limiting resistor R1 so first thing to say here is that the output of this amplifier will be 180 degrees out of phase with the input and I emphasize that because to calculate the gain this time it's minus R2 over R1 and it's minus because at any moment in time the uh, input um, waveform will be 180 degrees out of phase with the output as I've just said so in other words it'll be uh, sort of the opposite or minus if you like so uh, if we use 100k and 10k again well that gives us the formula minus uh, 100,000 over 10,000 which gives us a gain of minus 10. Now R3 um, also has uh, an equation to calculate it which is shown there that's R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 so if we do that maths it gives us an answer of 9090 ohms uh, don't have one of those resistors not surprisingly the nearest I've got is an 8k2 um, now, I'm, now I've used an 8k2 in this circuit but I really could have used a 10k, I'm sure that would have also been uh, completely acceptable uh, but just for completeness sake that was the, the closest one I'd got to, 9090 ohms. So here's the arrangement on the breadboard, 
we've got this time we're using the top half of the um, op amp there you can see the 100k and the 10k resistors above and the 8k2 resistor is the one that goes across down towards the bottom and the circuitry below the op amp is the um, amplifier you've just been looking at which was the non-inverting version so let's take a look at that on the breadboard Okay, here's the breadboard arrangement for the uh, second example then, which is the non-inverting amp. Uh, so you can pretty much ignore all this circuitry here. So we've now got the input, as before, on the yellow wire coming in here. I'm using the top half of the um, dual op amp uh, chip here. So these are the two uh, resistors that uh, control the, the feedback and the input. And this is the 8K2 resistor which is connected to the uh, positive going input. And then the output goes out on that, that blue wire there. So exactly the same principle. I'm monitoring the input from the signal generator on channel 1 of the scope and channel 2 of the scope will be showing you the output. So let's now go to the scope view and see what we've got. Okay, so here's a trace that looks remarkably similar. However, this time we've got the uh, inverted amplifier connected up to the scope, as we've just looked at on the breadboard. And I've got exactly the same uh, waveform uh, coming in, um, same exactly the same voltage. And what, what I'm going to do now is connect up the uh, purple trace to the output. And what we get is something that looks incredibly similar, um, except there is one subtle difference it's probably not that subtle if you're used to using scopes and that is that this is an inverting amplifier so the input is uh, 180 degrees out of phase with the output and if I now turn up that trace on channel 1 you can see there we are indeed 180 degrees out of phase otherwise the um, operation of the inverted not the inverting uh, op amp circuit is very similar to the non inverted uh, except for the phase difference okay well there's two uses for the op amp arguably three because we did also talk about the unity gain version of the non inverting and we've seen the op amp working very effectively as an amplifier there and we've also seen the effect of um, changing the uh, feedback resistor value on, on what happens to the output gain and hopefully that's been useful and made some sense. Now there's plenty more things that op amps can do and I think if I start adding them in now that's going to make this video a bit longer than I normally like to do so that's definitely going to be a part three as I guess this is part two and there may even be a part four depending on um, how I get on um, working through those additional circuits so we just see how that goes but do look out for those um, new videos and thanks very much for watching uh, and a special thanks to those who've um, decided they want a multimeter from Kaiwitz and they've used the code which you'll find in the description below if you have uh, done that thanks very much indeed that really helps the channel you get a discount too which can't be bad if you're thinking about getting a multimeter or something like that uh, you can check check that out at the links below um, obviously no obligation but if it's something you think you'd like use the code get a discount and that helps the channel thanks for watching please click that thumbs up that really helps and that's free subscribing also is free and that helps even more and that would be absolutely great thanks for watching see you on the next video